may God restore may God restore that you come to someone's house and the person tells you you know what all of us just lost our job husband and wife and we still love God in the midst of it you say I know we love Jesus beyond that but I am a child of God a transmitter of his life let me bring you a reality beyond economy a reality beyond banking and finance in the name of Jesus I deposit the life of God in this house and you walk away and before you get home the person is calling you and saying I don't know what you did do you think people will even allow you to rest the way we labor over publicity begging people to come to church should it shows you that our formula should be suspicious it was never supposed to be that way the abundance of the demonstration of the spirit is the authorized way to draw people to Jesus draw people to Jesus that I'm speaking now and someone is seated and then you get a text message your family members are in a hurry to call you where are you you say I'm in church they say you need to pick what happened just to let you know that Baba on a wheelchair has stood up at home you mean it yes he stood up after five years of being on the wheelchair come on now say where are you say church what kind of church is that let me tell you human beings are so desperate for results they honestly don't care who produces it for some of them they are willing to get it from satan and ask for forgiveness later on they are that desperate don't play with the intelligence of an enlightened generation and keep stimulating their expectations and then they do not get the substance of it this is my call that Joshua Selman you need to step up the bar higher than this that when we say God said the nations will respect it because there is power that backs his speakings lay your hands on your head in one minute and cry Lord I am available invest greater levels of your power upon my life someone is praying upon my life the extent of his ability he's able to do above all that we ask or think there is sufficient power available to the body there is sufficient power available in Christ sufficient power to bring witness to the name of the Lord sufficient power to lift the downcast sufficient power to heal the sick but it is still residing with the Christ through his spirit for some reason it's not been able to find sufficient expression in our world oh speak from the heavens and the earth will sing Oh, speak from your throne, and I'll hear from the earth. My altar is calling me. Oh, my hunger is calling me. Oh, oh, speak from the heavens. And the earth will hear Oh, speak from the heavens And I'll hear from the earth My altar is calling you My altar is calling you Hallelujah, hear me the world, Africa, and even in this nation, we are going through challenging economic phases. It's not just a Nigerian problem. Isn't it amazing that the greatest victims of this Holocaust are believers? And yet we say it does not matter. It is a shame to our conviction. It is testing everything we claim to know about God. His love, His mercy, His kindness. It is giving justification to people to backslide. While our work with God is not about money, only a wicked king becomes unconcerned about the welfare of his people. By the privilege of leadership, everyone's 
and again I think about the welfare of my people as human as I am it is evil for me to fold my arms and watch my people serve God and then go through things and I can't help if I can't help I step in this is me a man do you know how many believers have compromised in the last one two years because of economic hardship and we are still blinded we don't yet see that that is a strategy Satan is using and yet nobody can say restore and we keep bragging around emoji is the result receive a job how many people have the job receive breakthrough someone comes and then the worst part of it is that they package a seed and come to kneel down and sow it into our lives believing we ourselves is not even working in our own lives so we have to depend on manipulation oh speak from the heavens and the earth will hear oh speak from the heavens now hear from the earth my altar is calling you oh God. if jesus could speak to a man and tell the person go to the sea and catch a fish coin will come out what does it take for a man of God to say in the name of Jesus you are not lazy you are doing something I bring a spiritual advantage to what you are doing but the truth is that it is not working human beings are not dummies they are not stupid if we do not contend for the power of God I promise you regardless what social media Parents and a certain generation have pledged their loyalty to God. Whether it works or not, they love him more than results. But there is a generation of angry, inquisitive people rising who will say, justify my coming to church. Justify it. And I'm praying that we will have answers for that generation. That they will not rise and say, I have been attending church for 10 years. I was better off before I came to church. Do you know the amount of young people who don't go to church again in Europe and America? They say it boldly. They come up and say, I don't go to church again. I watch my parents. They serve God. Some of them serve God as missionaries and pastors. They couldn't afford the school fees. What kind of a God is that? I will never serve such a God. No. Whereas our grandfathers served idols, they were uneducated, but they brought proof. They brought proof of a bumper harvest. They brought proof of children. They brought proof of whatever it is. Somebody will steal and they'll say, whoever stole, let him start running as a madman. They will catch that man from the market and bring him and say, so you stole. He say, yes, I'm sorry. Then he will recover. And yet when church, oh, did there are angels at Alat. They were at Alat when they stole from you. They didn't do anything. Something is wrong with our understanding. Let's return to the place of power. I'm telling you this. Hallelujah. Do you know the average pastor who prays for a sick person? Honestly, the sick person does not even believe he will be healed. So when they say pray for me, what they mean is add to your experiment. Hoping that one will work. Not Peter. He enters a house and sees the mother-in-law of someone and says, what is going on here? They say, mama has been sick. He said, no, not when I'm here. I come as an ambassador. Mama, stand up. Go and cook for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I was told about one of the fathers of faith in the West many years ago. Someone came to meet him. I think the person had annoyed him or something. And when he saw him coming, he told him, one more step close to me. 
and they will carry your dead body one more step who has the audacity to tell a kidnapper that one more step and it's your dead body that they will carry you see how we don't even believe it and you will hear that from a crusade while people were returning people who did not fear God tying charms carried all those people plus the speaker that was used plus the salvation card they all took it to the wilderness Abba no sir no sir no sir by the time five people die in three days for trying to touch your family the, nobody tells anybody don't attack this family he says from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom suffered violence. how does someone go to a native doctor and plan over a pastor and it actually works and kills the man I hope you know many of the challenges in people's lives is demonically engineered we need to wake up oh, something is wrong we need to wake up I tell you we need to wake up we need to wake up we need to return to the place of power the embarrassment that powerlessness is bringing to the name of the Lord the embarrassment that powerlessness is bringing to priesthood the embarrassment that powerlessness is bringing to the body of Christ is getting out of hand oh let there be a people the worship team got it well they sang about that army they sang about that army it will start with a few people who are desperate and say we will not lie to ourselves again we celebrate what has been done before us but God lift up this bar and take us to the chambers of the spirit where we will encounter genuine power genuine power power to lift power to heal power to heal to hear I get delighted in my heart when I hear people come to testify it is consoling that while we hunger for more at least we are happy seeing that the power of God is working pray in one minute Lord I am available I am available in this season oh let me be one of the factors that takes away reproach out of your name away from your name many of our families still serve idols because we have not demonstrated power many of our families still serve idols because we have not demonstrated genuine priesthood take a minute to pray take a minute to pray From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, your name is to be known. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 
Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward, through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.